Hi, I'm Zor. Uh, welcome to Unizor Education. This is a um, second lecture uh, of problems, so, uh, problem solving um, about triangles, quadrangles, stuff like this. Um, there are, I think, eight lectures altogether um, dedicated exclusively to problem solving. Um, I do encourage everybody to, to look at these problems and try to solve them yourself. It's extremely useful and it actually builds up your creativity, which is not even related to mathematics, uh, but it's related very much to my most important point that mathematics really develops your creativity, which you can use anywhere, any other industry, profession, whatever. So anyway, uh, let's just do it. Okay. Okay. Prove that the median of hypotenuse is a in the right triangle is equal to half of that hypotenuse. Okay. So you have the right triangle. Now, we have to prove that the median to a hypotenuse is equal to its half. Well, let's think about it this way. Since it's median, we know this is equal to this, right? Now, if I will extend the median by the same size and build a quadrangle, now this quadrangle will be obviously uh, a rectangle. Well, first of all, it's a parallelogram because since these two are equal and these two are equal, so these angles are vertical, that makes this line, this segment, equal to this segment from triangles A, B, C, D. So A, B, P triangle is congruent to DPC by side equal to side, another side equal to this side, and the vertical angle in between. That makes AB congruent to CD. Similarly, BD is congruent to AC. So it's a parallelogram, and it's not just a parallelogram. This angle is right angle. And since um, interior angles of parallelogram are either supplemental or congruent to each other, that makes all angles um, right. So every angle is 90 degrees, so this is, uh, this, this is a rectangle. And since it's a rectangle, um, its diagonals are congruent to each other. But one diagonal is a hypotenuse, another is double median. If they are equal to each other, that means that the median is equal to half of, of a hypotenuse. Proof converse theorem. If median in the triangle is equal to half the side, it falls on then the angle where it starts is the right angle. Okay, so let's consider we have a triangle and median is equal, it's half, half of this side. So these are three equal uh, segments. Well, how to prove that this angle is the right angle? Um, well, actually, there are many ways of doing it. Here is, I would say, an unusual way. The, well, the usual way is to do exactly the same thing. Extend it, have a parallelogram, and prove it from the parallelogram that this is um, the right angle. But here's something which just came to my mind. Uh, I think it's quite interesting. You see, these are uh, congruent segments, so are these. That makes this angle equal to this one, 
and this one equal to this one because these are isosceles triangles. So A, B, C, D. A, D, B is isosceles. Since median is equal to half of the side, it falls on. And this makes an uh, isosceles triangle. So it looks like sum of these two angles is equal to sum of these two angles. But what do we know about the angles uh, in, the rec in, in a triangle? That sum of them is equal to 180 degrees. So, this plus this plus this plus this is 180. But this is half of this, since piece of this angle is equal to this one, and another piece is equal to this one, so altogether that makes it half of 180, which is 90 degrees. I think it's more interesting than with parallelogram. But as I was saying, there are many different ways to prove the same theorem, so this is just yet another way. By the way, the previous lecture was mostly for construction problems. These are mostly problems related to proving something. Prove that in the right triangle, median and an altitude to a hypotenuse form an angle equal to difference between the triangle's acute angles. Okay, so you have right triangle. Okay. Now you have a median and you have an altitude. AG is median, AE is altitude. Now, the angle between them is supposed to be equal to the difference between two acute angles. Well, let's do it this way. Since this acute angle is equal to this acute angle, right? Since we know that EG, median, is equal to half of a hypotenuse, BGE is um, isosceles triangle, and so is GAC. So this angle is also the same. Okay, now, what else is interesting? Uh, AE and B and EC and AC, AEC, the triangle AEC, also the right triangle. So what's the uh, interesting point about AEC? and ABC triangle. Well, both are right triangles, right? AC is altitude, so this is a right angle, and in ABC, the A angle is right. But what's important is they share the same acute angle, which means the other acute angle is the same. So this other acute angle, a, uh, EAC, is uh, congruent to ABC. Again, since both ABC and ABC are right triangles, which share the same acute angle, another acute angle will be uh, the same, will be congruent. And now it's obvious that angle DAE is a difference between DAC, which is equal to this one, one acute angle, and EAC, this one, which is equal to another acute angle. So the difference between the bigger and the smaller acute angles gives you the difference between the median and, and an altitude of the right triangle. That's it, and the proof. Okay, given triangle ABC segment AD bisects angle BAC. ABC 
and bisector. So AG is a bisector. Point D lies in BC. Okay. Straight line through point G is parallel to side AC. So we have a parallel line here. Uh, then through E parallel to BC intersecting AC at point F. These lines are parallel and these lines are parallel. Prove that segments AE and CF AE and CF are congruent. Well, let's think about it. Well, since these lines are parallel and these are lines are parallel, EGCF is a parallelogram, so this guy is equal to this one. Now, since AG and AF are parallel and AG is transversal, these are um, al uh, alternate interior angles. AEG -E and AF parallel and AD is uh, a transversal. So these are alternate interior angles. Now since AD is bisector, these two angles are equal to each other. And that's why these two angles are equal to each other, EAD and EDA. And that's what makes triangle AED isosceles, since angles at the base are equal to each other the sides are congruent, and that's what makes ED congruent to EA. So FC is congruent to ED because it's a parallelogram, and ED is congruent to AE because AEG is a isosceles triangle. That's what makes FC and AE congruent. That was easy. Okay, given an angle, MXN, inside it an angle PQY, so there is one angle, and there is another angle, in such a way that MX So MX is parallel PY, and NX, NX is parallel to PY. And what's important, the distance between MX and PY between mx and py is equal to the distance between these two. So since distance is uh, measured by perpendicular, we can say that if you take the point and drop the perpendicular here and there, they will be equal to each other. So the distance is the same, parallel and parallel distance between parallel lines here and there is the same. Now, since the distance is measured by a mutual perpendicular, so I put, uh, I, I use the y point and drop two perpendicular, two perpendiculars to, to both sides of mxn to get these two, call it a and b. Now, that's all the condition. Proof that bisector of angle MXY is a bisector of PYQ. So they share bisector. That's what's necessary to prove. Okay, first of all, bisector of angle MXB must actually contain this point. Why? I'll just prove that these two angles are congruent to each other. 
Now, these are two uh, right triangles, uh, X A Y and X B Y, with uh, congruent legs because the distance between parallel lines is the same, and uh, common hypotenuse. So that's why two angles are congruent to each other, which means the bisector goes to y, uh, to point y. Now, what if I continue this bisector? How can I prove that these two angles are also the same? Well, that's very easy, because this line and this line are parallel, and x, y, and its continuation is uh, uh, transversal. And angle M, X, Y, and angle P, Y, whatever, W, are, uh, how is it called? Corresponding. Yes, corresponding. These are corresponding angles. So, P, Y, uh, W, and M, X, Y are corresponding with A, M, and P, Y parallel, and X, Y, W um, transversal. Now, same are these two angles, W, Y, Q, and Y, X, B, also uh, corresponding angles. And they are equal. So this is equal to this, this is equal to this, these guys are equal among themselves, so these are equal, so the continuation of line x, y, w is bisecting the angle p, y, q. End of proof. that any segment that connects two bases of a trapezoid is divided by a median in two congruent parts. Any segment that connects two bases of a trapezoid. Okay, so you have a trapezoid. You have its median. What's necessary to prove is that any segment connecting two points on bases is divided in half by a median. So we have to prove that mx is equal to xn. Uh, well, what do we usually do in cases like this? Well, we make a parallel shift towards one of the vertices. So uh, let's call M was original letter and this will be M prime. So if we shift MN to the right so that N is gliding towards C, and M would be gliding towards Z, D into a new position, M, M, and prime. Now, what happens? Well, it's a parallel shift. So, considering lines B, C, and A, D are parallel, while M will be gliding along B, C towards C, M will be gliding along uh, uh, A, D towards M prime position. And obviously, M, N, C, M prime is parallelogram. And what's interesting is that PQ, which is parallel to BC and AD, um, will be dividing the triangle M prime C, D in two pieces, and this point would be half this would be x prime. Now, why is it half? There was a theorem about triangles that if the line parallel to a base uh, crosses the side um, in the middle, it will cross another side in the middle as well. So, 
This is the line, PQ, parallel to the, to the base, and it's crossing one side at point Q uh, in its middle. That's why X prime would be in the middle of the CM prime. Okay. But now, let's consider uh, M and C M prime. This is parallelogram, right? And since PQ is parallel to both, then it's two different parallelograms actually equal to each other. X and C X prime and M X X prime M prime are uh, both parallelograms, which means that this side is equal to this, this side is equal to this. But since C X prime is the same as M prime X prime, so they are congruent to each other, that's why these, why, uh, these also will be congruent to each other. And that's what proves that X M and M X have the same lengths. Again, this and this, these two segments are congruent to these two, and these two are congruent among themselves from a triangle C M prime P. That's it. Uh, given a triangle ABC, let's vertex B be on the top and side AC B at base. Point X is an intersection of two bisectors of angles at the base. Okay, so you have one bisector and another bisector. And crossing is X. Okay, straight line through point X parallel to a base intersects at points M and N. Okay, so these are bisectors. And MN parallel to, to, to AC. Prove that segment MN is equal to a sum of segment AM and NC. Okay, well, that's actually, again, such a long uh, condition of this theorem, but the theorem is actually trivial. Here is why. MN is parallel to AC. AX is transversal. So these two angles, MXA and XAC, are alternate interior, and that's why they are congruent to each other. But at the same time, since this AX is a bisector, these two angles are congruent. So that's what makes these two congruent, and that's what makes AMX an isosceles triangle with these two segments, sides, equal to each other. Same thing on this side. Since XM is parallel to AC, XC is transversal, so X, uh, NXC and XCA are alternate interior angles. And congruent to each other. Now, since XC is a bisector, these two angles are also congruent to each other. So these are congruent, and these are congruent. That's what makes these two congruent. That's what makes these two sides, XN and NC, congruent to each other. And that's what makes MN equal to sum of AM, because it's equal to this piece, and NC, which is, is equal to this piece. Straight lines are drawn through all three vertices of a triangle forming another bigger triangle. Okay, so we have a triangle. And we have three sides, three lines parallel to something like this. This is our original triangle, ABC. And this is our new triangle, 
let's say M N P. So, what's necessary to prove here? They look the same, right? Okay, prove that this bigger triangle is divided by sides of a smaller triangle uh, into four triangles, each congruent to the small one, and side being twice as big as the parallel side. Okay. So what do we know? We know the parallelism, right? Now, since this is parallel to this and this is parallel to this, that makes A, B, and C parallelogram, right? Which means this and this are congruent. This and this are congruent. Now, A, B, C, P is also parallelogram, which makes this line congruent to this line. Now, M, B, C, A is also parallelogram, so this is the same as this. Now, M, A, C, B is parallelogram, so A, C, and M, B are uh, congruent. And finally, missing what? This one. A, B, C, P is parallelogram, so this side and this are congruent. So what do we see? Well, basically, we have already proven everything. First of all, all these four triangles are congruent among themselves by three sides. That's number one. Number two, what we see is that the length of this guy is half of this guy. So big triangle is twice as big as the small triangle. And each side is twice as big as the one which is of the small one, which is parallel to the big one. That's what's necessary to prove. Again, the, to draw and to explain what we want to do is longer than the proof itself. Proof is trivial. Proof that in an isosceles triangle, sum of two distances from any point on the base to two legs is constant and equal to an altitude. Okay. That seems to be relatively easy to So if you have an isosceles triangle, and you take any point here, and distance to this, and distance to this, two perpendiculars. So this theorem states that sum of these two is constant, which does not depend on the position of this point, and is the same as an altitude towards the leg. So basically, if you move this point to the right, now, this piece will be longer, this piece will be shorter, but the sum of them will be exactly equal to this one. That's what's necessary to prove. All right, so how can we prove this? Well, let's do it this way. What if I will draw a line parallel to a side, to a leg, like this? So these are two parallel which makes this piece is equal to this one. Now, what I have to prove right now is So, one more. So, from point M, I draw a parallel ME to the leg AB. Now, this is a sourceless triangle, don't forget that. Now, since these are parallel lines, I can say that uh, angle BAM is congruent to EMC because these lines are parallel and AC is transversal. So these are two corresponding angles. And since BAC is equal to BCA, 
That's why angle A C, E E M C is equal to E C M, and obviously is equal to this one. All right. So this is obvious. These are corresponding with this parallel and this transversal. Now, since this angle is equal to this one, in an isosceles triangle, so I have this is equal. To, these two angles are also congruent to each other, and that's why EMC is also an isosceles triangle. So whenever I cut a piece of an isosceles triangle by a line parallel to a leg, I have left also an isosceles triangle. Now, here is what's interesting. From my altitude CG, I cut a piece YG, which is equal to the PM. So this distance from point M to AB, which is MP, MP is perpendicular, is the same as the distance from point Y to G. If I will be able to prove that this piece, CY, is equal to MQ, then my theorem would be proven completely. Because now I can say that PM plus MQ is equal to GY plus YC. Right, which is the full L, L altitude. Now, that's actually much easier to prove that XC is congruent to MQ, because we are dealing with isosceles triangle. Just forget about this part. Just consider only the isosceles triangle. What we do have here is two altitudes on two different legs, which are obviously congruent to each other uh, well, number one, because we have already considered this problem before, but number two, it's really easy since these are uh, right triangles, this one and this one, which share hypotenuse and the same acute angles since it's an isosceles triangle. So these two altitudes are the same, that's why MQ and CY are the same. But now, MQ, we just add a piece MP, and that's what the distance to another side, and similar piece YG being added to CY gives us the full altitude. So no matter where, where point M is located, sum of these two distances is equal to uh, the altitude to the, to the side. Okay, I have the last problem. Change a condition of the previous theorem to use a point on continuation of the base outside of the triangle and formulate theorem in this case and prove it. Uh -huh. That's interesting. So you have also a isosceles triangle, but now instead of being inside the triangle, point M is outside. Now distance to this and distance to this. Well, uh, most likely it's the difference between these two distances which would make an altitude. If M is inside, that's the sum. But if M is outside of the triangle, then probably the difference between the distances of two um, legs of uh, isosceles triangle will make an altitude to a leg. Now, how to prove it? Well, the same way. Um, let's uh, let's do it this way. We will draw a parallel line to AB through C. Now, since M and P Q are okay, since M M is perpendicular to A B and uh, C W is parallel to A B by construction, M Q is perpendicular. Now, 
um, this angle is equal to this one as corresponding angles with these parallel and transversal. Now this angle is equal to this as an angle in isosceles triangle at the base. And this angle is equal to this as vertical, which makes these two angles, QCM and MCR, equal to each other, which makes triangles CQM and CRM congruent because they are right triangles. This is the perpendicular, don't forget. And this is the perpendicular. So these are right triangles with common hypotenuse and an acute angle. And that makes these two segments, QM and RM, congruent to each other. And now you see that the altitude PC, which is equal to MQ, obviously, because these are parallel and perpendicular. So the difference between NM and RM is equal to MQ, since RM and QM are the same. And Q is in turn equal to PC. So that's why we can state we can state that the difference between the distances from point M outside of an isosceles triangle on its base to both legs is equal to an altitude to a leg. That's the end of it. Okay, that's it. Uh, that was the last problem to this lecture. Um, don't forget unisor.com has this and many other lectures as well. And uh, for parents and supervisors, it provides an excellent opportunity to, to control and supervise the educational process of their children and, and students. Um, that's it. Thank you very much and good luck with other problems.